He kōna e pūrangi tēnei nā te reo irirangi o Aotearoa. Ti hewa mauri ora ki te whaiau ki te o marama, me ngā mihi o te wāki a tātou katoa e ngai wi hoki mai. And welcome back to Mapuna the podcast where we talk today uh, with one of our guests that I've actually been looking forward to talking to for a long time. His name is Nicholas Dalton, Nick Dalton. And, of course, he founded and started the company Toa Architects. But actually, Toa Architects is more than just an architecture company. It's also looking at Papakainga, the development of Papakainga, the building of Papakainga, and our cultural markers placed upon those Papakainga, also whilst maintaining kaitiakitanga for the whenua. Hence the phrase they use, Papa, Papa Tuanuku, Kainga, home, healthy, and well-being homes for Alfano. Nick started his company, Toa Architects, when he was just a young man, and one of his first major projects was the Waka Māori, a controversial project started during the 2011 Rugby World Cup. We talked to Nick in his office, you'll hear reference to that, on High Street, right in the middle of downtown Auckland. Here we are this week with Nick, again from Toa Architects, Nick Dalton on Mapuna. Here no Tarawa, no Tuhoe, no Ngati Tuvaretua, Ngati Fkawe, Ngati Pikiao. Nicholas Dalton joins me now. Te hoa, Nick, te nā koe. Te nā koe, if Thank you kama. for talking to us. Thank you for doing this. Um, we sit in this office, and I'm looking out, and I can see all your kaimahi. There's a there's a tenor flag uh, and a whakaputanga, sorry, whakaputanga kara, hang, hanging just above one of the desks. Um, there's a young whānau, young kaimahi here. You must be extremely chuffed mm. about this place, hiring so many young Māori into this business that we don't see a lot of ourselves in, mm. e hoa. Mm. Kia ora. Um, oh, look, it's an honour and a privilege to have you here uh, ite Um So, you know, absolutely, I, I was just on the stage in Wellington for the Designers Institute. Uh, the best of the best uh, got selected for that, uh, humbly so. And, you know, for Te Arawa, it's very, uh, it's not a, a word we have to look up, you know, that word, that word humble. But um, <laughs> uh, but I had a, a young Samoan uh Tuahine come up to me afterwards and, and asked me questions and I said, come to the studio. I said, there's more hoodies on my on the kaimahi than suits. And I think that is, um, uh, our kaimahi are themselves here, mm. you know, and they are Māori first. And, uh, yes. What, what, what does that mean, Māori first? I think it's a, it's a, it's a for me, it's, it's a sense of belonging and it's a sense of... Um, being comfortable in your own skin, mm-hmm. if, if you you know if you are uh, pro, you know uh, uh, in the frame of mind, if that's that's a, a beautiful thing to be, which I think it is. Mm. Yeah. That's something that we, I think, take for granted. Yes, being Māori first is it difficult to do in a business like this? I mean, architecture, when we think about it in and of itself, we don't think about Māori first potentially being applicable to this kind of mahi. Mm. So, so Tor is founded uh, literally. You know, if you if you look at our one of our alliances, Hemui Moya, right? And so it actually came about um, by a recurring dream that I had around. I believed I was in Aotearoa, but as I was walking around, there were no landmarks yeah. apart from Marae. That told me this was a Māori land, right? And so I went, I need to do something about that. Yeah. Uh, and we've progressively ramped that up over time. So, uh, you know, 2010, I started by myself. Within three months, we got to Waka Māori, you know, six-figure contract with Ngāti Whātua, Oraike, uh, and TPK. So I had got three staff straight away. And from there, it just started building. But in my early days, I took on as much work as I could just to pay the bills. And sometimes I had to be subversively Māori because obviously even 12, 13 years ago, it was a different climate to now. Yeah. Um, but I, I got this word of advice from Jack McKinney, who's one of the top um, uh, restaurant architects in, in Auckland. You know, he did Ahi and, and a few others. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, and he's the man. And he tutored me at, at, at Auckland University. He said to me, be careful what you uh, do because you get known for it and that's what people turn up for. And so <laughs> we've gone hard, we do Māori and yeah. we do it beautifully and that's what they turn up for. 
Where does the flair for design come from? Uh, for me personally, so for me, um, I'm extremely lucky. My my paternal grandmother was an artist, and she, I, I, I've seen one of her pieces that my aunt has in Australia. It, it looks like a, a colourful macan, like it's just phenomenal. Wow. Um, and I only realised that quite late in the piece. But um, my father's uh, an architectural designer, um, and he's very creative in himself. He's a potter, you know, different kind of mediums. Um, and it was just something I was always sort of drawn to, eh? Yeah. yeah. So I think, um, and then my mother, she's extremely uh, colourful. Uh, she's a very staunch, tūhoi, uh, te arawa woman, so you don't mess with her. <laughs> um, and I think it's a, it's a combination of her loving bright colours and being afraid of mum, as, as all good Māori boys are, <laughs> uh, that, you know, pressure makes diamonds, eh? So, so there was pressure. Was there an expectation that you'd do something like this? Oh, uh, I, you know, I'll be careful because mum will probably listen to this. But, uh, <laughs> I think that, you know, very, very conditional. Like all of her, you know, I've got two older sisters. We all had to go to university. It didn't matter what we did. Wow. Uh, and I remember getting to school and because I was a very um, staunch Western Heights uh, a graduate, uh, I did the honorary eighth form, uh, <laughs> which was the rite of passage back in the hey, day. Guess what? You're not the only one in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I just said that yeah, on the school yeah. radio. Anyway, keep going. So, so, but this is super interesting, right? Because when I graduated, when I finished high school, mm. and I was, I loved school. I didn't love the schoolwork per se. I loved the people. Yeah. I love things like graphics and woodwork. And so when it got to the end of, you know, 18 years old and I had to go to university, I could only draw. That's all I could do. So architecture was my only option. Five years. And I just remember going, I don't, it's my whole life has been school. Yeah. And so it was, it was quite a dilemma. Anyway, um, because I only got a uh, university entrance, even after, you know, having another go, <laughs> um, in Victoria, I spent two years at Victoria in 1998, 99, yeah. and they're very, very academic. They're very mass and uh, physics focused. Uh, I had to have a meeting with the head of school who said, your son's going to struggle. Uh, uh, in the first year, what I do love, did love about Victoria is they chose one A+. Plus. That's it. Yeah. In Auckland, they hand them out like yeah. confetti. But, uh, and I got it. I got top student in the first year in design. Wow. But I failed calc. Uh, so I didn't make it through, tried again, got a B plus in calc, failed again. So I transferred to Auckland, which ironically you needed an A bursary to get into, but a B a plus average and a good portfolio had those two things. 2000 moved up in here, three years later, top student in Aotearoa. Wow. Second Māori in history to do that. Wow. And, and people, you know, I, I get a lot of eye rolls on that one, they like, I'll oh, let it go, bro. <laughs> uh, and I, part of me, you know, my tearawa is sort of like, I'm always going to say that to the day I keel over. But um, one of the reasons why I amplify that is because you're right. We're not, uh, it's not a natural fit. It's, it's, you know, architecture is very, very uh, Eurocentric. The whole system is built on the RIBA system, yeah, which is yeah. the Royal, you know, British Institute of Architects. Um, which is about uh, something built in the 1700s, yeah. a gentleman doing architecture for other gentlemen, which is just a load of whatever. Um, and so my life's ambition is to change that script. At the moment, there's 3%, less than 3% are Māori. So architects. Who, who were your mentors then as you were going through that process at Auckland? Um, well, Larry Thompson is definitely. Oh, Larry Thompson, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's the he's the he's the top, and and he's the top for a lot of reasons. And I, um, uh, we we call him our architectural kōrua, yeah. you know, we're his moko. Uh. And he was so effortless in his well everything, but he he thought huge. It was always you know uh, when he when he graduated in the eighties, um, Louis Thompson Architects was the one to to watch. He um, got asked to redesign Auckland and so he did that uh, he used to do these giant kind of glass walker coming out yeah, of the yeah. halfway out and his scale was not people it was T-Rexes yeah. he used to put T-Rexes in these buildings eh? and um, you know he got uh, invited by Frank Gehry who's one of the top architects in the world to do a design for Te Papa so he, he was he was just right up there and I didn't realise at the time because he was so giving to me in his time and his afi, 
uh, and his aroha, um, and I didn't realise it until he passed how much that meant. Yeah, you know? mm. yeah. Even after, and yet yeah, take the top student thing, and I get that, <clears throat> but even then, I mean, having gone, gone through that university process myself, there's still a part of you that sometimes thinks, what am I going to do now? Yes. You know, you go through that process, you graduate. Right. Yeah. There's still not a, a natural kind of pathway to follow. No. You've still got to forge your own a bit. Mm. So after going through and graduating, how difficult was it? Because as you said, it was 2010 that you started the biz. Mm-hmm. So how difficult was that kind of intervening five-year period to figure out what to do, how to do it, who to do it with? Yeah, look, great, uh, great uh, question, Pathai. I, I went overseas because the, the, the top student piece came with a scholarship. So I went back to Europe. I had been there before, but with with part of the intent being potentially I would work for a star architect. Um, uh, architecture in the Northern Hemisphere is still very um, classist. So uh, it's very, unless you've got lots of money, if you want to work for a big name, it's 80 hour weeks for nothing. Mm-hmm. And the ones that are doing those 80 hour weeks for nothing, like you can't even get a job at McDonald's to pay for your life, mm-hmm. um, they're still having holidays in the south of France, you know. So uh, I, I, did quite a lot of Europe and I saw a crack in the sky when I was looking for a flat in London and the, the, the sombre grey blanket was this little bit of blue yeah. and it was summer at home, dark at three o'clock in the UK and I said get me the heck out of here so I came home yeah, in 2004. First interview in Takapuna and I won't mention the f- practice because this is, will be slightly embarrassing for him. Um, the first question he said to me, he goes, oh, are you part bro? Uh... And I said, my mum's Māori, so yeah. I'm Māori, yes. And he said, but you're, but you're part white too. I said, my father is Pākehā, uh... yeah. And he sort of sat there quite glumly and he said, um, just be mainly white, eh? <laughs> you know that, eh? And I, and I, you know what I mean? Like I'm 20 two or yeah. three and I just was like I think it kind of went over my head because I was like I have no comprehension yeah, of what yeah, you're talking yeah. about bro but I'm just going to pretend you know I didn't hear it um, and ironically um, and I've had that a few points at the time where people have challenged whether I should do Māori or be Māori and most of them are in our dust uh-huh. right so he had 12 uh, people working for him I was one of them now he has two or three and we're 25 strong so yeah. I'll be Māori I think you know <laughs> Because it's, um, yeah, I mean, there's things like it's hard for doors to open when you're, I don't know how you feel about the way I say this, but you're quite obviously Māori. Do, do, you, know, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and that's obvious in this building, but you're quite obviously Māori. So, yeah. so part of me thinks, well, just getting doors open must be hard. It, it, well, I, th- I think it was challenging. I, I, it's, it's like me for like now. It's it's a frame of mind, yeah. and if you go in there um, with your head down or fuck a ma, then you're going to get treated like that. If you walk in like I don't care what you think yeah, yeah, yeah. or do, yeah. um, the door opens. Yeah, uh, and I firmly believe that for all of our people. Now uh, I have this very interesting insight. Um, Twenty years ago, our people backed. Uh, Rangatahi to become lawyers. Yeah. Now they're high court judges, yeah. chief justices, yeah. um, and they, they they fill the halls, right? We need to do that with professional yeah, services, yeah, yeah. right? And so yeah. it's my personal ambition, and we are um, this 4th of July at Te Mahuruhure, which will be the home of the Toa Foundation. Yeah. It's specifically about going, actually, we need to do that succession plan now. What, why, people will say that, why do that? Because no one is, and it's if. Uh, but why is it important for us to be a part of it? I, I think it's important because uh, parallel to that, and this is super interesting, right? Because at the moment we're in a form of the recession. We oh. uh, tour. I won't say we're insulated from that, but we are the busiest we've ever been. Wow. And I think there's a way to it to that, and I think that um, without getting too political, I think that uh, I had a signal personally last year that despite the government, this is even when Labour was in, I, I was just like, I'm over playing second fiddle to that. I yeah. want to find a pathway for our papakainga, for our projects to live without actually being subject to X, Y, Z. And I think uh, given some of the narrative out of some of the this current coalition, um, Māori are standing up. There's mm. this massive uh, resurgence and pride and 
shucking off the shackles. Mm. We're going to do this. It's it's a good point you make, and the reason why that kind of um, struck a chord with me is because you know people will, will point back to nineteen seventies and petition and land marching mm. sometimes. Mm. But at the time you were doing this, making in two thousand four, two thousand five, mm. you had Māori Party, you had Forshaw Seabed, uh, you know, evolution of Māori TV, all that kind of stuff. Mm. So a real kind of burgeoning Māori identity, mm. Māori media movement, all that kind of thing. So at the time, part of me thinks, well, serendipity view is really interesting because right. at that time this was all going on. Cold up. So, so do you think that was, at that time, was it formative and do you feel that you kind of hit it at the right time? Oh, yeah, look, that's, I, I think there's a, you know, I was down in Christchurch or Otautahi last night, I met with uh, the, the most wonderful rangatira, Nook Karako. Oh, Nook, hey? oh, tūtahu yeah, Nook, yeah, yeah. Rāpaki, I, I, Rāpaki I, I, hard, I, yeah, yeah. I, and you know, I'm a, um, I'm a disciple of Nook's, I just think that he's... Uh, <laughs> He's incredible and so so graceful in his yeah, mana, eh? Yeah. And he opened this evening for us on behalf of uh, on behalf of Kaitahu very elegantly and with with mana and grace. And I sat with him afterwards, and we're talking away. And I said, "We've got to do, do this, this." And he goes, "Are we going to keep talking about it, boy? Yeah, or are we going to yeah. do it, eh?" Yeah. It and sounds like Nook. It is, yeah. and and you know, and he texts me this morning just to remind me, you know, did it. So we got tenth of uh, July. We're going to meet at PWC. Watch the space, Fano. Wow. Watch the space. Mm. Wow, yeah, Nook's a real mover and changer. He he just gets it done, and I think he's the perfect combination of statesman. Yep. Uh, former National um, yeah. Party uh, MP, yeah. stalwart, you know, cabinet, and um, but he's into innovation and he wants to see our people um, ha- not only housed but you know, for public hanging for us, uh, it's a, it's a holistic piece. It's not it's yeah. not just houses, eh? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and given what he's done, so uh, I see the connection now because given what he did at Arpak, he was oh, the right. across from the Marae, and all that development they've done at um, at Arpak now, man, that Marae is amazing. Isn't it beautiful? And see, this is what I said to him, and he he loved it because I said you combine out like what he's done there, yeah, what we've done at Mahuri not yeah. just with the Taumato yeah. Kupe, but the Kainga housing, yeah, yeah. Papa Tafai, yeah. and Kainga and, Tafai, yeah. and what uh, Matua um, uh, John and and Fire Christine Panapa, who are just like you know again, um, yeah, just right up there for us, say eh? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh wow, I see the connection there. Yeah, Rapaki actually warns those of us, man, they did an amazing job. Beautiful, Marai, beautiful location. Um, uh, do you mind if I pick up a bit on the on Waka Māori? Kia That was an interesting time. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of conversation about the Waka in 2011, as I, if, I, if I can recall. Political conversation too. Aye, aye, aye. What was that like dealing with that for you, given it's was one of your first projects. It was the first major project, and it was the catapult. It was literally the catapult, and I will actually thank the, um, the Blair brothers and Tracy Davis yes, um, yes, because yes. they went in there. Uh, it wasn't made public that um, uh, the Right Honourable John Key sponsored it with his $2 million discretionary fund. Oh, yeah. I think um, he should have actually came up with the flag on that because uh-huh. he backed the right horse, I think it was, uh, or right walker, yeah. um, because it was transformative. And, and for me, as a very, you know, uh, we just started, so it was a massive kind of boost to get uh, Te Puni Kōkiri, yeah. Ngāti Whātua Warake, hey, John Key, you know, that's, that's the trifecta at that point in time. Three months into starting tour. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that's the great bit, right? And then we'd kicked it off. I was sworn to secrecy X, Y, Z. And I went to, to Australia to stay at my aunt's. And I, um, my mate sent me this, oh, Tapa Waka. We remember that yeah. headline. And, and that, I remember who coined it too. Yes. And we don't need to name names. <laughs> no, you know, uh, but he may be currently in the employ of yes, the coalition government. Yes, but yes, anyway, carry yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You fill in the blanks, um, but but here's a here's a here's a pretty here's a sore point. Um, so he sent me this article. My friend was in Australia, yeah. and it was the Herald, and it had like they'd they'd grabbed like an ugly render, like one mm. of the worst renders, and stuck it on the page. Tupper Walker wasted mm. two million dollars, and and like the the, the article was just um, you know Nadimu Blair called it you know politics one hundred and one kicking it along the ground. Um, but more interestingly for me, and I'm pleased that it seems to move somewhat a little bit, is when you went to the comment section, the first comment was, please tell me this is a joke, Māori belong in the dole queue. 
And I just remember being heartbroken, bro. I, I literally was like, my father's bugger, my mother's Māori, and I said, everything I do is for the pride of this country and uh-huh. everybody on, in it. And how dare you write that, think it, publish it. Uh-huh. Someone in England, and it was embarrassing. Uh-huh. It was embarrassing. Uh-huh. And, and once again, the most incredible, uplifting, all of that was dissolved when I take my cousins, we all got VIP, Waka Māori, and they were just like, I've never been so proud to be Māori inside that thing, eh? You well, know? I, I and remember the, it. And, well, I met you there. Yeah, yeah, that's there, right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 because I went to pretty much pre every pre-event <laughs> <laughs> before going to Eden Park, there was an event at, 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 at Waka Māori. Um, and there were so many things going on. And the other thing I think that was really interesting for me was, I mean, that whole World Cup was weird. It was a weird yeah. time. You know, you had things like Michael Laws saying that he trusted Māori Television's ability to be able to broadcast the Rugby World Cup like he would a small child with a knife. Mm-hmm. It was just a really weird time. But given you were just, like, literally starting out, first mm-hmm. major project, mm-hmm. I mean, was there a point at which you thought, I, I, I know you're strident, mm-hmm. and you've talked about that. Mm-hmm. And it's almost advocacy, actually, mm, mm. what you're doing. But was there not at some point a little bit of doubt or a, a little bit of second-guessing going, oh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm up for this? Because the, the vitriol that comes with this kind of stuff, and it still happens now, obviously, but the vitriol that comes with that stuff is, well, as you say, it's unbelievable. It, it's irrational. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, I, I, I've, uh, I think my, my resolve in this space is... is, uh, is come tenfold in the fact that I love catching me a, you know, yeah. a racist in the wood pile, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and because I'll, I'll beat them any any time of the week with uh, rationale, with mana, with grace. Um, but I, I think at the time I did, I took it, it, it took me to the floor, yeah, those yeah, comments, yeah. and it, did, it broke my heart. Uh, but I think just like on MJ's last dance, you know, he'd just get, he'd get G'd up by someone... Um, standing on his mana, eh, you know, and he just sort of like, I used it as fuel, and that's all I ever do. I take those comments, all the comments that I've given you today have been fuel for me to go, mate, if you think that you are suffering, uh, you're doing this for all of our people that don't have the ability to stand up and say, you are wrong, I am right, or, you know, we'll disagree, but I'll see at the finish line, I guess he'll be first. Hey. And the other line I love that he, what MJ says is started with hope. Yes. Which is Tua, right? Aye. Why Tua? Why the name Tua? Super interesting. So I was at another firm which will rename, <laughs> na- <laughs> rena- remain nameless, uh, but you know they'll probably be listening to this too. Uh, and look, I'll start with, I, I actually got registered there as an architect, so I, ha- I have some fond memories. Yeah. Um, but how they handled anything Māori was disgraceful, uh, and I'll use that word. Um, because, like, for example, we were going for a pitch for a waiariki before they did the ehinga oh, yeah. uh, project, and um, I was like, man, I can use all my skills, I can use that I won that award, um, and so I asked my bosses at the time, because that's my rohe, yeah. can this I This is waiariki politics I, down, yeah, yes. that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love, and it would only be right, that one of my elders um, welcomes us, or mm. mahis us on to for the pitch. Uh, and um, it was my uncle who had an OBE. I sent him the profile to all the directors, and the response was almost immediate. This isn't your project, Nick. Uh. We don't know him. So why would we do that? And I, like, I, again, deflated day. Eh? Like, mm. okay, and, and, it, and it just was inappropriate. I, what, would I fight for that? I mean, I probably would now, but mm. I just, there were a couple of cuts like that which made me go, I'm, in, I'm just in the wrong place. And I have the ability, both my parents are self-employed. I mm. grew up with that. My mum was gone at 5 a.m. Oh, every okay. day. Okay. So right. that, that, those engines were like on afterburn. Like I, that was my, my, in my periphery, right? Yeah. And so I was like, you can't stop. Don't moan about it. Go out and do something. So, so from that, Julian, it was like, this has got to be brave. Yep. Thought. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, you're listening to Mapuna on RNZ National. We're talking to Nick Dalton. We're here at Toa Architects in the middle of Auckland, downtown Auckland on High Street, Tamaki Makoto. Good to have your company. I, I want to talk about Tamato Kupe, but I, I, you know, 
We can, bro. It's, no, can we? It's, it's our favourite. It's, it's our favourite. Look, you it's know. too much of me, though. We're, you you yeah. know, it's, it's weird because you know. It's no, no, no. I get it, but I think I think here's here's the rub, right? Because I'm like, we we've got a we've got tall poppy on top of tall poppy, eh? For yeah. ourselves, as a like, nah, nah, nah. I don't I don't want to be fucker he he, eh? Yeah. But fucker he he uh, for me is kupe for me is red rangatira, and to fucker mana him. And to fuck a mana at 27 years old when he leaves Rangi out there <laughs> with no GPS yeah. and, and goes past the Kermitix. If you, go, you take a straight line to the top of the North yeah. Island, right? If he was off two degrees, yeah. miss it completely. It wasn't by accident. You know, that is a, a feat of genius and 27 years old. Uh, backwards and forwards, evidence of him stopping in the Kermitex. I love Matua Reriata's uh, corridor around translating the karakia, finding out exactly the time, 1000 AD. <laughs> this is always a running joke when I go to speak on a stage and I said, so if Kupe was first, the, the next one is Tasman. And I said, who, who, what time did he get off the boat? Oh, that's right. <laughs> he didn't even get off. 16 something 16 something around okay so let's call him uh, you know a distant second and then we've got third we've got Cook right uh, you know, seven, seven hundred, seven hundred, two pi. <laughs> seven hundred years later. So I'm just like going, you know, um, and here's one that you don't know, mate. So when we, uh, one of the main funders, and you know, um, was the DIA, and I love that is a rebrand of formerly the Colonial Office yeah. of New Zealand, yeah. right? Yeah. And I love that, and. I'll throw some air in their balloon. The fact that they had a community fund to connect community, and there was a clause in there in terms of uh, Māori as well, to this what is perceived as an extremely elite sport, the America's Cup, yeah, yeah. right? And so um, I was very, very um, pleased when uh, Te Mahurihuri wanted to embark and honour their ancestor. And I was like, I'm there, f- you know? And so yeah. we, we threw down. You remember that? Yeah. Um, and I remember calling uh, the DIA and they said, this is not in scope. Yeah. And I said, how do we make it in scope? <laughs> and he was quite stumped. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. gave me two impo- seemingly impossible goals. One was you needed a resource consent and we had the smallest window and not a lot of budget. And the second one is we needed endorsement from Team New Zealand. Now, the irony for one second is we needed, you know, I don't know, and I, and I revere Team New Zealand, it's not, it's not about that, yeah. but, you know, a, a relatively new history if you compare it to if Kupe yeah. was here in 1000 AD. Yeah. We needed a letter to tell us that Kupe was, had a link yeah. to navigation, yeah. to connecting community, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was just like, what? so I got it. <laughs> so I got even and I got the letter, so... <laughs> And, and, and full credit to Blair Took and, and yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the skipper um, who, who endorsed it. They, yeah. they wrote a letter and they're completely behind it and they're wonderful, talented. Um, Pete Burling. Tanga, yeah, yeah, Pete Burling. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, they, and they're still on board that journey. So, oh. you know, as you know, they're still working with Hotoroa. Aye. I, yeah. So there, there's a beautiful kind of, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. and I love that. And I just, when I, I, I spoke about Kupe, you know, it's, 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 transform, it's transformative on every level, bro. Hey, yeah. The Guardian writes a blimmin yeah, yeah, article, yeah. and I've got, I've got a physical copy here. Uh, and so um, Mahuru Huri are getting bookings from California. You know, it's, it's open the whole northern hemisphere. And we, we get a bit bashful just like you, bro. And what we've got to remember is actually not everyone reads that one, so you've got to get another one. You've got to, we have to fly the flag. And I understand, given a bit of Tour Architects DNA, mm. Tour Architects DNA with Rugby World Cup and America's Cup and big events, and you know, talk about Māori and Tau Motu Kupi. But why Papa Kaina? Because, because there'll be an argument from people who will say, well, Papa Kaina is a Papa Kaina is a Papa Kaina. A housing block is a housing block is a housing block. Why is it important mm. to see and feel ourselves? Mm-hmm. Beautiful corridor, and I, and I think uh, and, and I keep talking about this in terms of like we, it's starting with tikanga eh? yeah. and tikanga and, and the value system tika pono aroha um, the tile yep. right. So um, all of those things that we as a people um, honour and um, a housing development. A papakainga isn't that at all. Papa, 
papatua nukau, a kainga, um, a place of warmth, a place of sustenance, food sovereignty. I'm talking like completely changing the paradigm of where we currently are, which is actually the mana at the moment is how big is your hamster wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. big, oh, you know, and yeah, even yeah, yeah. On, on the weekend, oh, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm mortgaged to the teeth, you know, and, and, and they, you know, there's a there's some mana in that. And I think it's ridiculous. Mm. I think we need to reboot that. And this is where Tor comes into its fore because for me, it's about innovation. Um, and actually, it's about looking back because if you look at our Papa Kainga, I mean, um, uh, this is a big one, uh, Pariaka. When you look at that as a settlement, mm-hmm. one of the first uh, to have hot and cold running water, they had a bank. They had flour mills. They had housing in, in close proximity. Mm. Um, and that was just this beautiful village. And, and for me, it's actually returning to the great things in our history, um, coupled with modern technology, yeah. um, to make uh, villages which are about um, looking after Papua Tuanuku, reconnecting with our culture, um, our reo, uh, our tikanga, um, and not having it all own you. Mm. 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 If I can use another example on your tuhoi side, mm. uh, Aye, aye. Yeah, rua kinana and that. So, so, so that's really interesting because, again, the audience might be listening to this and goes, this sounds intensely political. Um, I, I, look, I, I, I'm a political person, but I, 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 I'm almost like that's a lane over there. I'm going. Yeah, yeah, I'm, it, it's, yeah. it's like I'm, I'm doing this regardless of what the political scene is. I, I think you know I have given um, the coalition a bit of stick. I actually think that we're going to turn up because the, what we're offering with with Nook, you know, some great mana there, and several other people in the industry is a offering that this government will actually find really appealing because it's part of the solution, right? Yeah. We need solutions. And it's not strip out all the good stuff, strip out the tikanga, strip out all those things that should underpin this. I mean, um, mahi tahi kainga that we did in Otara, prime example, started with tikanga. Mm. Every single consultant was uh, welcomed by Pōwhiri there. That is a wonderful organisation, uh, mahi tahi kainga trust. Uh, we built those units for $275,000 each. Uh, it was six weeks ahead of schedule during lockdown, two lockdowns, um, and we used very little of the uh, contingency, so much little that they could furnish all of those whare. Uh, 41 units filled with uh, tangata fai order that love it. And when I show that, everyone goes, why don't we just do more of that? Cost effective, mana, aroha, yeah. connection, belonging. Ha, ha, hang on. So, because that was happening at the same time Taumato Kupia was being built. Right, their sisters. You know, yeah. Sister how, and how are you getting to gym? <laughs> oh, that, the, I kind of know the answer. Yeah. This, I, was, I, I may or may not have a contact, as you know, by the name of Uncle John Palmer. But, 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 um, but uh, yeah, how are, you do, how are you able to do all that, John? We, everything we do is values based. Right, so wow. people aren't turning up to make money. Yeah, yeah. Everyone needs to make a yeah. living, yeah. but it's not. Um, I would say, you know, the, the negative end of capitalism, where it's like, how do we make as much as possible? No. This is how do we get the best outcome? And every single person, when you bring them in on that journey, and and the tangata tiriti, we've got park, many park out that bust their but to see these things come out of the ground, you know. Um, and it's wonderful. It is Aotearoa for me, you know. There's some rhetoric out there around division, but from where I'm sitting, yep. we participate, we uh, tangata homi, we hold hands, and we get it done. Yeah. Can I ask you a bit about the whānau here? Kilda. Because I know we, t- we talked about it a little bit before, and, and I do want to press forward a bit more on Toa Foundation, if that's okay. But, um, you know, for a fellow who really just likes to draw, 25 staff, massive turnover, lots of things going on. I mean, what is that like? It's, it's not an easy business to do, bro. There's, there's easier businesses mm, to mm, run. Mm. 
Oh, look, I, uh, look, you know, I think the first, I didn't pay myself for the first eight years. I kind of, I, I used what was left, you know, which sometimes wasn't much. I, <laughs> I, 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 I used to, you know, at some points in time, I'd have to go and get some money out of my credit card. So all of my staff got paid. Um, I'm not afraid to tell those stories yeah. because the kaupapa was the most important thing. And I've never missed a payday, mate. And I never intend to. Mm. Um, it has been stressful at times. Uh, we were on Auckland Light Rail last year, so the biggest oh, were you? $15 billion, wow. the only New Zealand company to do so. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was a trajectory that would have been you know, um, incredible in so many ways, and, and we do need to do a light rail, but um, it, the tap got turned off in October, and yeah, my eyeballs were bleeding, um, and we had to pivot. But the beautiful part, even though financially it was hard, mate, I, we went back to all of the whanau, all of the iwi, all of the hapu that we're working with now, and we said, how do we serve you better? And they responded. And we're still here. We are stronger than ever. Uh, and it's, it's, it's wonderful, mate. And, I, you know, I've got, I've got this incredible team here. Operationally, I don't, I don't need to be here, which is a dream, um, because of uh, uh, one of our, our tamaki lead, uh, it's Tangata Tiriti. His grandfather drove a Māori uh, battalion in El Alamein. Wow. Um, yes, yes. And so he's doing that. He's the reincarnation of his grandfather driving the Māori battalion. Hey, you know what I mean? So it's not by chance all this stuff is happening. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm blessed every single day, bro. You know, as much as I'll, I'll te arua bang on my chest uh, <laughs> uh, and teach everyone my haka, but... Um, <laughs> But I, I am so blessed, bro. This is just, it's, its you know, I, I get a call and I think that we're in some kind of crescendo and I'll get a call and it will be, um, I'm a descendant of Rua Kinana. Yeah. And I, I'll just be in, I'll just have a tangi. Yeah. Uh, that's a feel good. Second part of that statement is we have lots of land, no putia. How do we make this? We yeah. need a kainga. Yeah. So hence to a papa kainga. I want to take out all of the problems and go here moi moi on one end yeah. a key out the other so that, what, do you, that, what do you call yourself nowadays then because <laughs> it's, it's not an architect it's, it's much more than that it's to a copa but I, mm, I, I don't know, mm, I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Mm, no 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 it's a, it's a really good point I, I don't I don't think we're architect, we're certainly yeah. not bricks and mortar architects yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. we're far from it we're the furthest thing from it uh, when everyone tries to put, well, particularly me in a lane, I go, I'm in every other lane yeah, 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 than the yeah. lane you try and put me in. Yeah. Um, and I think that's part of our success, and I think that's a very Māori, it's ingenuity, it's, we're, we're con- constantly entrepreneurial, constantly we've got to reinvent ourselves. COVID for me was a joy, and mm-hmm. I was smiling, just because the world got flipped upside down, yeah, totally. and I was like, you know, terrified on one level, because who knows what's going to happen. But I remember zooming everybody in, and I was like, oh, just, I'm up for this. And they just go, because you love change, Nick. <laughs> hey, but I thrive in it. And the fact that the whole world had to do it, yeah. had to play what I've been playing. Yeah. Sometimes I'm up at 3 a.m., yeah. I'm up at 5 a.m., again instilled from my mother, you get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right, I don't, I don't know what the definition is, but yeah, architecture is sort of one of the modalities or yeah, one yeah, of the it's outputs, yeah. but what we do is actually uh, equity-based, is tino raga tiratanga, is manu motu hake, manifested in a physical form. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The foundation, now you, you talked about this, um, and here's the thing, I've seen lots of people who have done really well, they go to start, they, they start foundations. And um, and then th- that becomes the twenty four hour seven, mm. <laughs> seven day a week business, mm. right? Mm. It requires a lot of attention, it requires a lot of your time. People call them passion projects, mm. Mm. Um, but it can be quite extracting. But but why why are we doing this? What what what's the real outcome you're looking for aside from getting us out there? But I, I you know I um, we, we've got uh, um, some Brazilian um, billionaire funders that want to really connect with Māori in particular and do house be involved in housing. Hang on, so hang on, <laughs> Brazilian billionaire fund. How did this come about? It, well, they 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 arrived. So there's a Brazilian Chamber of 
yes. uh, Commerce, yeah. which, which has recently stood up. And I, and I went to the, to the launch, and it was quite incredible because basically I saw another culture very akin to ours. Love the kai, love the party, love the culture. Love whānau. Love whānau, long-term thinkers, Brazilian rainforest, for mm. example. And um, there, one, uh, one of the collectives is the largest green and blue energy provider in the world. Uh, the Brazilian economy is worth $2.3 trillion. Um, and I just, all of these layers started to come to, 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 to task. And I, and I uh, they do three or 400 billion euros a year from transforming the power of Tamanui Tera. Mm. Mm. Right? And so we have a power shortage here. We're still burning coal, coal from Indonesia. Um, Innovating there, eh? so so there's there's some connections that um, are being asked to be made, mm. and for me, it's um, there's a financial piece, but actually there's this really wonderful opportunity to shape things. So where it comes back to, basically they said, what's your housing um, pipeline look like? And we're we're working with Nati Mutanga uh, on the Chathams, all the way up to. Um, I recently found out I was um, Ngāpui, uh, oh. Rei Hana from oh, right. Ohio. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Went yeah. my whole life going, I'm not Ngāpui, yeah. to I am, uh, but, uh, which is wonderful. And so we've got, uh, at the moment, at a very modest $4,000 a square metre, we've got about $3 billion worth of whare um, that need to be realised across the country. Yeah. Uh, Mahurihuri is one of the first to be completed, right? Yeah. Uh, we got told by developers, you can't put a house on that riverbank. Mm. We got 14. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell me, mate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mahitahi Kainga Trust, 41 units, right? So from some iwi wanting to do 1,000 homes, um, we, we, we're, we're engaged across the motu. And, and my, my statement now, Julian, is that I understand in most professional services to do with building, we are all at less than 3% yeah. are Māori, right? So what I say to all of my consultants, and they are wonderful people, um, big companies like Oricon, um, I need your, if you want to participate in this $3 billion pipeline, I need you to help me to build our succession plan. So Māori are building for Māori, yeah. and they're coming up. So, so how are you doing? Are we talk, we're not just talking like cadetships or internships, right? What so, are, what? so yes, so that, that's a really good point. So that, that, so there's, there's, you know, there'll be a whole sort of spectrum from, I don't know if you call it silver to bronze, platinum, whatever. Yeah. And so the entry level is like, I, I said, because people are doing it hard, eh? Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to overload uh, companies with, you need to put put in. They may go, I've got a work experience role. I've got... Uh, you know, school holiday program, they mm. can come in. We'll take the whole lot. Yeah. We'll take the whole spectrum. Some will put in putia, some will put in jobs, all of that stuff. But it's actually getting partnerships yeah. across the spectrum where they welcome Māori and they say, we want to participate with you. We want to be part of this. I, I think it's the Aotearoa story, right? Yeah. Now. How are you getting people into the pipeline, new people into the pipeline? What's your talent identification process? Is so, it? so it's a really good point. And, and, and to be honest, we do it anyway. Yeah, it yeah. just doesn't have a label. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. You know, we've got two, we've got this wonderful Pacifica fellow over there, Rhythm. He just started and everyone's like, Rhythm of the night. <laughs> uh, poor fellow. And, uh, and here's a really interesting one. So he turned up and, um, and we gave him a piece of paper with a beautiful hand-drawn design. Rata did that. And he modelled it and used AI to make a photorealistic render in less than a day. Wow. Now, that would ordinarily take a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I looked at him, and he's sort of quite shy. And I said, bro, go hard on the AI, and you got a job, mate. Yeah. You know? So it, here's the thing, and we go back to the coupe story of being 27 years old when yeah. he left Tahiti, right? When I look at our, our rangatahi out here, they are the succession plan earlier than what they ordinarily would be. Yeah. And that's a technology thing, that's a confidence thing, that's a caring about Papa Tuanuku. Um, so I think there's a whole lot of stuff in there, Julian, that it, if we don't do it, yeah. it's actually on us. Yeah, yeah. And um, wish you all the best with it. Thank you. I know we'll be intersecting again throughout and look forward to it. Of course, you've been listening to Marpunar International with Nicholas Dalton.
and uh, we've been at High Street at their um, awesome office. There's only one off-putting thing about it. There's a guy wearing a blues jersey. But um, anyway, um, nowhere's perfect. Uh, e we look forward to having you again next week with more from Mapuna. E to tuki aida te kōrero, ko te toka i āki hāhe toka fiti anga rā, ko te toka i Mapuna, ko tāu e ki te ai, ko te ripokau. Te hewa mauri ora, kia tātou katoa.